Insta360 have just released the new version of the One X2, shockingly named the X3. In fact, moving forward, they've decided to drop the one part of the name for simplicity's sake. So this is the Insta360 X3. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what's new, and then I'll go over how to get started and look at various settings which will help you operate the X3 and get the best results. So Insta360 have sent me this one to try out a few days before the launch. And on getting it out of the box, my first impression was that it's noticeably bigger and a little bit heavier than the X2. And clearly it now has a much bigger touch screen. And another difference we can see is that there's two buttons under the screen at the front and there's also an extra button on the side by the power button. So what's new? Well, the most immediately obvious change is the 2.29 inch touchscreen, which is over twice as big and much less fiddly when changing settings. And combined with this bigger and bolder user interface, the X3 is much more user friendly. And this is almost like a smartphone screen now. A very small smartphone screen, but still, it's a big improvement on the little porthole on the previous versions. As well, watching back footage is now possible without connecting to a second device. Yes, you could look at captured media in the previous versions, but you couldn't really tell much about the shot, other than, you know, basically confirming that you'd captured something. And in fact, the max resolution is exactly the same, but we do have the addition of the algorithm style of HDR. Active HDR is said to keep your video stabilized during the action while evening out the highlights and the shadows for greater dynamic range. If you reduce the resolution to 4K, you can now shoot 60 frames per second in 360 degree mode, whereas the X2 was limited to 50 frames per second. And if you switch to bullet time, the X3 allows 4K at 120 frames per second and dropping to 3K even allows 180 frames per second. Meanwhile, the X2 bullet time was limited to 3K at 100 frames per second. With the X3, you can now take 360 degree photos at a resolution of 72 megapixels. Compare that to the X2, which had a maximum of 18.4 megapixels. Switching to single lens mode, the X3 can shoot up to 4K resolution. Compare that to the X2, the single lens mode had a maximum of 1440p. Insta360 has added a new mode which is called Me Mode. This mode allows you to film yourself, have an invisible selfie stick and you just skip the reframing process. With the X2, we can film ourselves but some work needs to be done in post, either in the Insta360 app or the studio software for desktop. So while this is listed as a single camera mode, it does actually use both cameras. So to access this mode, switch to single camera mode and tap the 360 camera on a selfie stick icon, which is the me mode button. And you will be limited to 1080p, but you can then choose 60 or 30 frames per second. The X3 allows you to shoot time lapses at an impressive 8K resolution, whereas the X2 is limited to regular 5.7K for 360 time lapses. Insta360 has introduced some new recording modes for the X3. So we've got loop recording, and this allows you to continually record video, but the X3 will only keep the last section of the video and you can choose to save up to the last 30 minutes. So this mode is designed to allow you to continuously record without filling the memory of your device. So this might be useful for a motorcycle dash cam, for example, or any situation where you're waiting for something to happen, but you don't know when it's gonna happen. 
So you could just leave the X3 recording and then as soon as you have the moment that you're looking for, you can stop the camera to make sure that you capture it. There's also another change, which is the addition of pre-record recording. So this wasn't actually available to my pre-launch X3, but I'm told that it will save 15 to 30 seconds of footage before you actually press the record button. So again, it helps you not to miss key moments. So let's talk about those extra buttons which come with the X3. So on the side, we have a button with a big Q on it. And this is the new quick menu button. Tap it to open up a bunch of preset settings. At the top, there is a preset created by Insta360 called Skiing. If I press the plus button, I can load in more presets from a list. There's also customizable presets, which you can create yourself and then save, which saves time having to reset the camera if you have a particular setup, which you use a lot. Below the screen on the right is a single lens mode button. If you're in 360 mode, pressing this switches to single lens mode. And if you keep pressing it, it will cycle through the single inner lens, single outer lens, and then back to the 360 mode again. So they've changed the design of the USB-C port cover. It's just a small thing, but the X3 now has a cover with a hinge, whereas the X2 had this little plastic connector. So if you want to use the Insta360 power selfie stick, you had to actually remove the X2 USB-C cover completely. And then you had to put it somewhere and try not to lose it. With the X3, you can just flip up the cover and it's really easy. So let's just quickly go over how to get started with your Insta360 X3. So to charge your X3, open the USB-C cover and connect to a power source. I just use the same USB-C power supply as I use for my MacBook Air and my Samsung. Before you start using your new X3, I would make sure to charge it first. Another thing to do before you start, uh, you will need to install a micro SD card, which will be used to store all the media that you capture. Open the battery compartments, pull out the battery and slide in the micro SD card. Insta360 recommends that you use UHS-I micro SD cards with a V30 or above speed class and XFAT format. If you've installed an Insta360 micro SD card, then it should be formatted already. But if you need to format your micro SD card, then swipe down, tap the settings cog, and then scroll down to SD card and tap format. Okay, so now we're ready to start using our Insta360 X3. So to power on, simply press the button at the side. It's the top button of the two side buttons. Now the X3 has two power saving methods. First, after a set time with no activity, it will turn the screen off. Second, if the camera remains inactive, the X3 will power off completely. By default, it's set to one minute before sleeping and three minutes before powering off completely. If the X3 goes to sleep, you can simply tap the power button once to wake it up. If it powers off, you're gonna have to power it on again. So if you want to change the times for auto sleep and power off, swipe down, tap the settings cog and scroll down to auto sleep. Auto power is just below. Tap the one you want to change and choose the setting you want. So even while you're recording, this sleep function will work and turn off the screen. But you can set it not to do that by selecting don't sleep. As we've seen, the Insta360 X3 has a nice big touch screen, well, at least compared to previous versions. The UI is also a little bit different. In the top left corner, we can see how much space we have left on our SD card. Top right is the remaining battery. Bottom left is the mode, which at the moment is photo. To the right of the mode is the mode setting. At the moment, it is set to capture 18 megapixel photos. Bottom right is the button which switches the monitoring view between the two cameras. To change modes, tap the mode button. Cycle through the available modes either by swiping or tapping and then either tap the selected mode or press the record button. Another way to change modes is simply to swipe in the middle of the screen and then tap to confirm. To change the settings of the selected mode, tap the information to the right of the mode button. For example, if I switch to video, you can see that it says that my current settings are 5.7K and 30 frames per second. To change that, just tap those numbers and now swipe or tap to select new settings. Tap again to confirm. 
To get more settings from that mode, swipe left from the edge of the screen. Now I can set exposure in different ways. I can set white balance and choose between three color profiles, which are vivid, log, and standard. Whatever mode you're in, swipe down from the top to open up some more general options, which includes the settings cog. Finally, to view your media gallery, swipe right from the edge. And as I say, with this nice big screen, you can get a pretty good view of what you've shot. And of course, if you have a 360 video, you can swipe on the screen to change the view. Tap the button top left to see your gallery in a thumbnail mode. Now tap the top right button to allow you to select and then delete multiple files, which is going to be faster than if you just deleted them one by one. If you want to change the view of the preview window in the X3, you need to long press on the screen and now you're in a different mode and you can just swipe to see a different view. So the way the Insta360 X cameras work is to shoot video from two cameras simultaneously and then stitch those two videos together to create one video with a 360 degree view. The Insta360 X3 allows you to shoot with both cameras, which is called 360 degree mode, or with one of the cameras, which is called single lens mode. So if you choose single lens, apart from the addition of me mode, there are gonna be fewer options available below. And the thing is that although me mode is under the single lens tab, in fact, it does use both cameras and then stitches them together. But the video you get is not a 360 degree video. So it has a fixed point of view. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can also use the lens selector button bottom right to cycle through single lens and 360 modes. To utilize the full power of the 360 degree video, we usually place it on a rod like this. And Insta360 has actually sent me three different types to try. So I've got the standard selfie stick, which works fine. I have the power selfie stick, which allows you to start and stop recording using the record button on the handle of the stick. And also it acts as a backup battery as well, so that it will give you longer lasting battery on your X3. Plus I have the extended edition selfie stick, which reaches up to three meters. This allows you to get real drone style shots. That said, I did find that with the heavier X3 on the end and extended to the full three meters, it's a bit harder to hold and a little bit more wobbly. That said, I still got the shots pretty much okay. So when we capture 360 media, we can simply use it as 360 media. Then we can upload to a platform like YouTube, which supports 360 degree video, and people can view it on 360 headsets or using their smartphones. So with your smartphone, you can just move it around to change the viewing angle as you watch it. Another way to use 360 media is to reframe it and then export it as regular video. To do this, we can either use the Insta360 app for smartphones or Insta360 Studio for desktop. So if you're looking for the best quality video, then I recommend that you use Studio. For editing on the go and tons of fun features, presets and more, you can use the app. Open the app and connect to the X3 via Bluetooth. Make sure both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are enabled. If this is the first time, connecting the app is going to ask you to activate the camera first. Once connected, tap the album button. The app will now access the video files from the camera or from the phone if you have downloaded them. If you play a video, you're actually streaming it via Bluetooth from the X3's memory. And you can see where the video files are by using this drop down menu in the top left corner. All shows you videos on your phone and on the camera. Select local to see videos stored on your phone or camera for videos there. Using the app, you can move files from the X3 to your phone, as well as for editing clips. When editing clips, you can either edit them while they're still on the camera or on your phone, but it's probably best to move them to your phone for a better experience. The Insta360 app also works as a remote, so you can start and stop recording, change settings on the camera, and as well, you can access features like the fly through effect. So if you want to learn more about how to use the Insta360 app, you can check out my previous video on the X2. To use Insta360 Studio, you need to download it from the Insta360 website and then install. To import media that you've recorded on your X3, first switch on the X3. And now make sure that you have USB mode set to U-Disk mode. 
Swipe down from the top of the screen, tap the settings cog, and where it says USB mode, make sure it's set to U-Disk mode. Return to the main screen and connect your Insta360 X3 to your computer using the USB-C port at the side of the camera. It now switches into USB mode and you should see a new external drive appear on your computer. Open the Insta360 Studio and it should automatically detect your X3 and then ask if you want to import all the media or just select certain files. On the left, you'll now see the media on the X3 and you can double click there to open it. So you can play the video, you can use keyframes and other settings to create your final video. And again, if you want to learn more about how to use the Insta360 Studio, just check out my previous video about the X2 because it's exactly the same. So let's look at some more exposure settings. In either photo or video mode, swipe to get exposure settings. At the top, by default, it will be in auto mode. And if you want to set exposure manually, switch to manual. This means you can now set shutter speed and ISO manually. And if you want to reduce noise in your video, make sure you set ISO as low as possible. In this mode, you can choose to set ISO manually, but let the camera set shutter speed automatically. And this is good for letting the camera adjust exposure while making sure that the ISO stays at a minimum. And sometimes we might want to set both ISO and shutter speed so that the exposure does not adjust during the shot. As well, sometimes a shot is gonna look better when we set exposure ourselves. Now in photo mode, it is set to pure shot by default. PureShot uses AI to enhance the dynamic range of photos while reducing noise and preserving detail. But you can switch to INSP, which is the 360 photo file extension name. Or you can choose INSP plus RAW, which gives you a RAW file as well. And RAW is good for doing color work later. One thing I didn't mention in my X2 video was a setting called Isolated Exposure. Now if you switch this on, each camera is gonna set exposure independently. So this might be useful if you have one camera facing towards daylight and the other camera facing inside an interior, like a car interior or a house interior. So swipe to open exposure settings. Swipe again until you get this little X3 camera icon and then swipe on isolated exposure. Note that when this is on, you're probably gonna get a line where the stitching is because you can see where it moves from dark to light. And this is what happens if you have each camera setting its exposure independently. So that's one of the downsides. Okay, let's go over some more general settings. To access general settings, swipe down from the top. Now we have a series of buttons to toggle certain features on and off. If a button is blue or yellow, then it's on. Buttons that are off are dark gray and white. The yellow speaker button allows you to toggle on and off the prompt sounds. For example, when you start recording, it makes a noise. But if you would prefer your X3 to be silent all the time, toggle this off. The indicator light is the light at the bottom of the X3. If you want to switch this off, you can do so here. To enable voice command, tap the button with the head. Next button toggles on and off quick capture. Quick capture allows you to start recording without first having to switch on the camera. With the camera off, press the record button and the X3 will power on and take a video. But when you stop recording, the X3 will actually switch off again. The padlock button will lock the touch screen until you swipe up. The light symbol is a brightness button if you want to adjust the brightness of the touch screen. There's a button for connecting AirPods and another button for a Bluetooth remote. And then we have audio settings with three choices there, which are pretty self-explanatory. So now if you want more settings, tap the cog button. Tap voice control to get two more options. In language, you can switch between English or Chinese. Tap voice command to open up a list. If you have voice control enabled, you can use these phrases to control the X3 with your voice. Now, if you have issues with artificial light strobing, you can try using the anti-flicker settings. Depending on which country you're filming in, choose 50 Hz or 60 Hz. For example, 50 Hz for Europe, 60 Hz for America. The bit rate of a video is one of the things which controls the overall quality. Choosing high here is gonna give you better quality, but the downside is that you get larger file sizes. Now there's a new setting to the X3, which is this sharpness setting. 
And here you can choose between four different levels of sharpness. So in video terms, sharpness is when the software applies a process to each frame, which is called edge enhancement. And this can make your videos look more crisp, but it can also make them a little bit more harsh on the eye and perhaps a little bit more digital looking. So you could choose to set this to low or medium, and then if you find that it's not sharp enough, you can then add sharpness later. But if you prefer the sharper look, or you don't wanna to have to add it later, then choose a higher setting. And then finally, if you have an external mic attached, you can adjust the gain here. So here's a tip for using the bullet time cord. So normally you can just attach it to the 360 camera and then you can swing it around to get different bullet time shots. There's another way to use it at the bottom of the bullet time cord, this sort of case part. This is actually covered with a piece of a sort of protector. So if you remove that, you can see it has a thread. And now you can attach your selfie stick. If you lift up this little catch here, and you can use that to stop it moving while you screw in your selfie stick. Make sure it's tight. And now that gives you some extra shot options. Swing it around. Or you can swing it this way. And you can also dangle it like a fishing rod. So that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.